Hey friends, welcome back to Erudite Magic. My name is Jeff Kowalk, and I'm so happy to have you here. In today's review, we're going to be talking about another John Bannon book. If you don't already know, John Bannon is one of my favorite authors of card magic. So, what's the book today? The book is none other than Destination Zero. As far as I know, this is John Bannon's most recent publication, although for, by now, if you're watching this, this is 2020, and this book has been out for five years, since 2015. So what is the book? What is Destination Zero? Well, it is 25 completely self-working card tricks from the repertoire of John Bannon. For most of you, that's enough that you're going to go click buy right now down in the link that I'm going to provide below because this is a fantastic book. Now, it doesn't seem like I'm alone in my love of John Bannon, and I'd like to explore just for a moment why that might be. Personally, I think it's because Mr. Bannon doesn't try to be anything other than what he is. In other words, he's not a mystic, he's not a card shark, and he's not a clown. He's simply an attorney who knows how to do some interesting things, something off the beaten path that you wouldn't normally see from an attorney. I think that holds a tremendous amount of appeal for people like me who are part-time professionals. So I have a career as a CPA, CFO, financial professional, and I like to do card tricks. If that describes you, it's a pretty good chance that you either one, already like John Bannon, or two, will love John Bannon when you get to know him. Mr. Bannon starts off the discussion right away with what kind of tricks are going to be in this book, and he imposes some very serious rules on himself that there will be no slights necessary whatsoever. And he very quickly defines what counts as a slight, what doesn't. But suffice it to say, if you are an absolute beginner and you don't know anything about card magic, if you're able to read and follow instructions, you'll be performing some world-class magic in no time. Now, for everyone else, you might be saying, but I'm not really interested in no slights or completely self-working. That's okay, I promise you, this is some very high caliber magic. And if you do know slights, you're gonna be able to put some of those slights into these routines and it's gonna make them better. You're not gonna have any problem dressing these up. So how is Destination Zero different from other self-working card magic books? For example, the Steve Beam semi-automatic series, or more recently we've explored the card chicanery from Marty Kane. How is this book different? Well, this book is different because, in my opinion, it relies less on mathematical principles for a lot of it, although anything self-working is going to be based somewhat on that. And most of the items in this book are very, very simple in terms of method. What Mr. Bannon has given you is a very interesting presentational hook on which to hang the method. In other words, John Bannon has given you some seriously cool magic with some seriously cool presentations. Just to give you a flavor of some of the routines that you're going to find in here, there's anything from versions of a can, which is any card at any number where participants think about a card or they mentally select a card or they even physically select a card and then that card is found at a certain number. There's nothing as clean as some of the more slight heavy methods out there, but there are some very interesting presentations that I wouldn't be afraid to try for lay people. The other cool thing about John Bannon's magic is that it's going to for sure slay lay people. So if you have friends that are not magicians, this is going to be totally fooling. But the cool part is, even if you have magician friends, John Bannon's magic is so sophisticated and so cool, it's likely to fool them as well. I can tell you for a fact that I have been fooled by many a John Bannon card trick by friends who practiced and performed this material for me. And I'm kind of an erudite guy. The style and layout of the book are really cool. He breaks down each trick into different segments with sophisticated terminology for each segment of the trick, which really just makes you feel like you're reading a James Bond style of book about card magic. Plus, Mr. Bannon has a very enthusiastic writing style where he gets you excited about the trick and what you're about to learn and do. 
There's a really great variety to all of the tricks. You would think that all of this would be card tricks, and that's generally true. However, there are several items that introduce other props or could even be substituted in and out. For example, there's a trick where John Bannon uses the playing cards as a way to determine where his family goes on vacation. And because there are 50 states plus the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, you have 52 objects and you're using quarters to determine where someone might go on a trip. It's a really cool presentational hook, but of course you don't have to use playing cards to make it work. He points that out himself that you could use a blank face deck, or in my opinion, you could even do this on some index cards that you made up. His point is that he uses an old deck and it makes more sense presentationally to have that old deck and makes it seem less like a magic prop or something special for this if you're using an old deck. Definitely a valid point. There's some super cool stuff where a participant uh, is able to deal down through a deck, stop wherever they want. The card that they stop at indicates how many more cards they should go. Now, of course, they have a free choice on where to stop. And when they stop dealing, there's one card there, and it's a card that you've been carrying around in your wallet. He includes a bank night, which really doesn't use cards at all. And this is what I'm talking about, is that it uses envelopes and money. You're probably thinking, well, I already have a bank night. Do I really need another one? But this one actually has a really cool presentation and it has all of the positives of many other bank nights, completely free choices, but without some of the sting of some of the other ones. The cool part is that John Bannon is always looking for entertainment value or at least interest. And when he's walking you through the psychology of why his tricks work, it just makes sense to someone who, again, is performing a lot for friends and family, and you're not trying to pass yourself off as something that you're not. You're merely talking about that you study influence or that you're interested in this, or sometimes this happens. And there is some adventures of the props. In other words, you're describing what the cards are doing and narrating someone through a series of steps. But again, that's the world where most people live. I should point out right here that most of this stuff is going to be close up. I'm sure that a number of these effects could be modified to work on a parlor or stage platform. Certainly when I talked about the bank night, I think that that could play well to almost any size crowd. The book isn't perfect. I will say that there were some descriptions that left me scratching my head because I think they're in error. For example, when he describes the all around square up, he talks about tilting the deck 180 degrees, and I believe he means your hand 180 degrees. Further, right after that, he is talking about maintaining the bottom card in a shuffle, and the pictures have the deck face up, and it really should be face down. Nothing ruins the book or understanding the method. You're still going to know how to do the slights that he's talking about. I just think that I got to point out that no book is perfect, even though this is a really, really excellent book. He teaches you his AK-47, which is a really cool thought of card. Basically, someone thinks of a card and you're able to set down a card out of the deck and it's, it's the card that they're thinking of. That's the plot. Of course, the method is going to be a little more sophisticated than that, but that's the way it's going to seem to your participants every single time. One of the things that I really like about this book is that it's definitely one that can grow with you. And in fact, it can even help you grow because when I was reading through it, I noticed that Mr. Bannon is kind of spoon feeding you things that you're going to need to know, things that took me years to understand and learn from other sources. He's spoon feeding to you along the way. For example, he's going to talk about why certain forces work and what makes them work. Most of the time in a beginner book, you're just going to do the force as it's said, and sometimes you're going to rush it. And that defeats some of the psychology behind what makes the force work. So Mr. Bannon's careful to explain what makes this particular force work and what makes it effective. He's going to teach you some false shuffles, but remember, everything in this book has to be slightless. So when he teaches you these false shuffles, there's really nothing to them, but they work. He teaches you something that I've never seen anywhere else, which is how to get a participant to do a false cut for you. 
This could be a very effective tool in your arsenal, even for your other card tricks. He talks about why packet tricks could be superior to a full deck trick. For example, there are a number of effects which use maybe half of the deck, and he goes ahead and sets up a completely separate half deck that he carries with him. Again though, this is going to appeal to certain types of performers. Some people only want to work with a shuffled deck in use, and most of the effects in this book fall into that category. However, there are some that are going to require a special setup or a separate pack of cards, or even recommended that you set up a separate pack of cards. He explains the structure of a free will routine. He teaches you how to perform effective magician's choice. He gives you a multiple out wallet, which can be made for basically nothing and is probably more organic than the typical magician's multiple out wallet. There's a lot that he shows you that justifies the procedures that he's doing. So in any self-working card trick, there tends to be more procedure than one with slights where you go directly to the method. But in each case, Mr. Bannon's put a lot of thought into justifying this procedure. And in fact, most of the time, these effects clean themselves up. So the other problem with a lot of self-working card tricks is that there are ways to get caught. In Mr. Bannon's work, I don't really think that's an issue at all. You're gonna be able to present these, they're going to be effective card tricks, and you're gonna be able to do them without having to know a lot about magic. In other words, you won't have had to read my five foot shelf of magic to do these things. So, who is this book for? Again, I think it could be for anybody. I've been in magic for a long time and I got a lot of really cool, interesting ideas out of it. If you are a mem deck user, or again, if you know other slights, you're gonna be reading these things and thinking, ah, I think I can tweak this by adding something to it. And in my own particular case, I found myself thinking how a mem deck could improve a lot of this material. Only time will tell if it actually improves it, or if, as Al Baker said, many a good trick has been ruined by improvement. Bannon even tells you at the end of the book that part of his reason for being in magic and for writing books is to challenge complacency. And you can definitely tell that he never stops thinking about his tricks because many of these effects are going to be a second version or a further iteration of something he published previously. Now that's not to say that there's overlap, I don't think that there is, but there are tricks that started off in another book like Smoke and Mirrors or Dear Mr. Fantasy, and he's come up with an improvement later that he's now giving to you in this book. Like I said, there are 25 pieces in this book, so there's something for everyone. I would be shocked if you could not find something that you liked in here. The book is hardbound and is about a little over 200 pages long. The photos are black and white, as is the entire book. Most of the routines are very straightforward. He gives you a few possibilities for differences and other ways that you could present it. Occasionally, he will talk about a method afterwards that if you wanted to deploy a simple slight, you could. But again, everything in the book can be done with absolutely no slights. The price is around $60 and you may have a hard time finding it. It is not out of print. It's just that it's on back order and I believe they have to do another print run. So I'm gonna include a link to purchase it. I don't know if they get it in stock or not. It fluctuates as they get the stock in. So you'll have to set up the reminders to email you when something becomes available if they don't have it in stock right now. I think it's gonna be pretty hard to beat the value in this book because this is the type of book that can grow with you. If you're just starting out, I think that this is an excellent second or third book I think that you should start out with like a Royal Road to Card Magic, something that will teach you the basics of sleight of hand. And I think that this one would be an easy compliment to any of that to get you going right away, to get you performing and comfortable with the style of presentation you may choose. And of course, if you're just beginning, I'm also assuming that you are a part-time magician and that this is not your full-time gig. So these types of tricks are also gonna play very well for people who don't claim to be a gambler or a full-time magician. You can just be you with some really interesting and cool card tricks up your sleeve. 
I certainly hope that you'll check this book out. I think that it's totally worthy of your consideration. John Bannon has really established himself as one of the best names in card magic out there. And it's pretty apparent why when you read a book like this. It just oozes quality and substance and provocative thinking about presentations and the beats within a trick. That is the timing of when things happen. And John's just a big fan of the unexpected and that shines through in this. That about does it for this review. So if you have any questions, as always, I am an open book. So we're gonna do my second giveaway ever. If you would like to win your very own copy of Destination Zero, I am giving one away. Thanks to my friend Keller O'Neill, I was able to procure two copies of this book and I wanna give one of them away to you. Here are the rules, pretty simple. You must be in the continental United States to participate. You must be 18 years or older to participate. And if you would like to win this book, what I need you to do is drop a comment down below with why you would like this book. Please feel free to share this because the more people that hear about this, the more likely it is that I'll be able to do this. I wish everyone the best of luck. Thanks for participating. And until next time, keep reading.